Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to be getting on with part three of my own steam train, which is the Flying Knotsman. Okay, but before we get on to doing brand new territory, I thought I'd go over a few of the amendments that I've made since last time, just for those uh, who haven't seen them. Uh, one was that I was told that a bell, which was near the front, was very un-UK and we always had a whistle, so I've basically turned the same thing upside down and moved it back towards the cab, so I think that's a good improvement, so thanks very much for that. Uh, another one which was quite a good uh, suggestion was to black out using sticker surgery all of the surround of what would be a white uh, old school light brick, uh, and I've done that, and you can barely tell now, it looks completely black uh, all around there. You can probably see it better if I turn off the light briefly. Uh, it's got a slight jagged edge, which is relatively unavoidable, but when we've got the kind of uh, reflective outer casing on, it looks absolutely perfect. So I think that's a really good improvement. So yeah, that was really good encouragement. Thanks for that. Now, one of my ones was that I wanted to add a second crew member. Uh, so we've added Stoker Samantha to the crew that was already just uh, Railroad Jim, who's in there shoveling away. Uh, and I was very cautious to not obscure the view that I spent so long doing of the kind of orange glow that you can only just really see inside there. But I really didn't want to block that. So I've managed to squeeze Samantha right up against the other side of the cab so you can still see in. And that kind of looks like she's enjoying the ride uh, and leaning out and enjoying the scenery as it goes whizzing by. So I quite like the fact that we can see her a bit more visibly than we can see Jim anyway. And it's a good contrast to the black. So that's really good. That was one of mine. Uh, and then another couple of ideas that came from a few different people were to remove the middle window from the kind of front three and reduce the number on the side and replace them with a slope, which I've done on each side there. Uh, and that's just so it didn't look like a massive long row of plain windows, effectively. Uh, so it looked a bit more trainy. Uh, and I think I agree with those as well. So thanks very much for that. Uh, and then I did change the dish, which originally was um, uh, the... Green Lantern sort of symbol, or what was it, Mysterio? I can't remember, <laughs> one of those uh, uh, Marvel or DC sort of symbols on the front, and we swapped it just for the plain black dish uh, that is covering the smoke box. I think I've got that right. Uh, so that looks a bit more plain. And yeah, I kind of like that pattern piece, but um, yeah, I kind of agree it was it was a bit out of place. So yeah, a bedoying for that. <laughs> So there we are. Uh, that is the few amendments I've made since last time. Uh, so what we're really coming to today is this whole section here. Now, uh, for those of you who've watched before, we've actually got the motor powering this train in the coal tender. And we've also got the IR receiver because I use uh, IR remote control for all of my trains. It just helps to use one system throughout. Uh, so that's absolutely full chock-a-block of wires. And then we've only got two lights going in here, one for the uh, uh, flames and one for the headlight on the front, which I'll turn off now. Um, and then obviously we need a battery box to power everything. Now I could have very easily put that in the first carriage because we are going to have five different carriages on the back of this. And one of them, I don't think it's a massive spoiler to say, will be a baggage car. And having a battery box hidden in a baggage car should be quite an easy thing to do. Uh, and then we've definitely got the height and so on to accommodate it. So that would have been quite easy. But a couple of people suggested that I do a second tender being a water tender. Uh, and I thought that was a really good idea. I hadn't really heard of those before. Uh, and essentially, it's just kind of a repeat of the coal tender, which often would have coal and water in because a steam train uses more water than it does coal uh, for the steam. <laughs> it might not surprise you to hear. Um, but sometimes when they're doing incredibly long distance journeys or when they're doing journeys in countries that don't have a lot of resources in between two points, for example, uh, in Australia, I think they've got great expanses of desert and in the, in the US, of course, uh, then they might use one for that. Um, but the uh, train that this is very, very, very loosely based on, at least its name is, is the Flying Scotsman. And when it went on uh, very long tours, it would have a dedicated water tender as well, as we can see here on this model version. So I thought that that was quite good fun, even if it was quite unlikely in a sort of built up area like Brick Nottingham, right in the middle of our country and surrounded by resources, that it would need one. But I thought, nonetheless, I'd go ahead. And then we could have kind of a three stage locomotive with the uh, engine, the coal uh, tender and then the water tender. And I think that would look really special. 
and a bit different from everyone else's. And if there's ever an opportunity to make mine a little bit different, then I generally try and take it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, and it's quite a tricky task because yes, we've got to build a, effectively a replica of this, but we've got to fit this great big battery box in. So it's an absolutely imperative that we basically make use of every single plate height to reduce it as much as we can and have this battery box pretty much touching the tops of the wheels uh, so we can not have it sort of towering above all the other elements of this uh, locomotive. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, just for those people that continually suggest that I add a water tower to the surrounds of my uh, train setup, uh, basically in the UK, a lot of these water tenders wouldn't get refilled from a water tower. They'd actually not stop and fill up from a trough in the middle of the train track. Uh, and you can see some pictures here of one of those troughs that's used by these old uh, steam locomotives. Uh, and essentially, it's a trough in between the two rails that essentially the, the rails would sort of decrease in height, which effectively brings the uh, trough higher up. And a scoop on the underside of the water tender uh, that we're going to be making would actually, with momentum, kind of pick it up and the water would fly up the chute into the water tender and refill it. So they wouldn't have to stop, they wouldn't lose any time. Uh, and in the case of the Flying Scotsman, they could uh, break the record from London to Edinburgh and vice versa as well. So that is really cool. So I don't need a water tower in my uh, town to fill up my water tender, uh, as I'm sure some people will suggest. So uh, yeah, let's get on to the build for the tender. Uh, so let's get Robin out of the way. Uh, so it's just gonna be based on normal wheels rather than the sort of wheels built into the uh, hubs just because that's a lot easier and you can do a bit more of a bespoke build uh, and then I'm just going to use some plates to kind of hold them in place so we've got our very basic wheel setup uh, and this is where we need to add these nice decorative pieces which I really like and that'll keep it in line with that one because that is actually a motor so it's slightly different but I think it's important that we have these same sort of uh, things on the side so it's got the same detail uh, so it looks the same, even though it is actually genuinely quite different. Uh, and then we need to really add that battery box. So I'm going to take it off here, take that off and take off this thing that makes the uh, direction easier to turn. Uh, and we're going to have to have that at that level. And that, as I said, is the most important thing. Ooh, I've taken a <laughs> plate with it. Uh, we need to have that absolutely at this level. Otherwise, it's going to get far too tall. So I need to fill in some gaps. So I'm going to use a four by six plate to give us some uh, decor or filling in that gap on the edge. Then I can put the battery box in there. Oh, but before I do that, I need to add my all important buffers. We need those. So already it's quite firm, uh, but the rest of the structure is going to be built pretty much on and around this battery box. Ooh, right, so you see it's already ugh, arguably a bit too tall. Uh, and then I can, basically make a surround, which is held together by these 1x12 plates, holding on some 1x2s that sort of fill in these gaps above the buffers. And that can go kind of like one of those old uh, sort of train bases that you had that had the hole in the middle, if you remember those from the sort of 80s. Uh, so it's effectively the same as one of those. So there we go. We're already starting to sort of bury the battery box. Uh, and then we can start to copy the pattern of the one before. And I was very, very lucky indeed to get another pair of these wonderful stickered panels with the 317 on, because I was really at an absolute loss as to what I could do on the side of this one when these two had the 317 and I didn't have another set, because what would it be, blank? It would kind of look different by, uh, you know, in, in, in a bad way. Uh, but thanks to Kim from the Netherlands, uh, who very, <laughs> must have been psychic really, very opportunistically, uh, sent me a pair of these as part of Brick Hall 100, uh, which was absolutely fantastic uh, <laughs> psychic powers, I think, because now I can use them on this third uh, part of the loco. So uh, I've moved the stickers using my patented hot tea technique. Uh, and now I can use them as the main focal point on each of the long sides. Sweet. Okay, on to the next bit, doing the sides. But I do really love these stickers. I'm so glad that Kim sent those in. I mean, if we just put those three in a row, as it's going to look, oh, 317, 317, 317. 
just looks absolutely fantastic already in my opinion um so what will happen in the main one obviously is this cable will connect up with here and will sort of get folded up a bit in the space inside and come out of a gap here at the front i'm not going to attach it now because it's going to be a nightmare to build but i'll just build the uh, kind of hole that the wire will go in and then at the end i'll attach everything together so effectively i am just copying the uh structure of the one before so we've got two inverted slopes there which kind of makes a little hole underneath uh, the two of them and this uh, one by two by four panel and you'll see that there is a little bit of a gap there for wire folding which is very nice uh, then i can add my kind of ladder pieces like that it's all black so it's really hard to see <laughs> and i'm going to add my kind of handrail there so that's kind of really mirroring what was on the one before uh, and i can do the opposite on the back because this one is a lot sort of kind of squarer i suppose because the front one you need to have that uh, access to the coal for shoveling so it's kind of uh straight backed and then kind of uh, diagonal fronted whereas this one's a real just block it's just a tank so they're going to have as much water in there as possible uh, and I think the real ones had a passage uh, through them a very narrow passage so somebody could get from the actual uh, train and kind of get into the engine without having to stop the whole thing or climb on the outside which would be very dangerous indeed of course uh, so there we go oh no that one needs to go on there and then we've got ones here slightly different Okay, so that is our basic sides. Pretty standard fare. Uh, and then on the back, we're going to have uh, more brake lights, effectively. Now, I don't know if this is correct, so you'll have to let me know. But I figure that sometimes it might use just the one tender, so it would need the brake lights on the back of that one. Uh, but when, obviously, they're both in use, then you'd need brake lights on the back of this one. So I'm sort of imagining that me doing kind of both is not wrong but it might be that they take them off there and put them on here i don't know so anyway uh, i th always think that more is more some people think less is more they're wrong <laughs> um, so there, i'm gonna have four brake lights uh if uh if uh, it's better than having uh none not enough too many is better than not enough so then i'm gonna add the uh sides and this is where I had to get quite a bit taller than the uh, original coal one. And I'm going to use just kind of a brick level here rather than the plate that I used on the coal tender. So the coal tender will actually be two plates shorter than this uh, when it's finished. And that's because I need to incorporate a sort of hidden button mechanism to press this button because I don't want it all to be very visible on the top because that would be really uh, odd looking. So, uh, yeah, I can finish that with a one by six brick on the front. Uh, so then I'm going to bring these slopes in just like we did on the top of the one before. So we've got some two by four ones, a one by two one on each end, and then a corner one there. And there is enough space for the cable to come in there, of course. Can't completely block that off. Uh, and that's why it is the width it is. We need those uh, spaces on the end, otherwise the cables have got nowhere to go. So there we are. There is our kind of topped out uh, water tender. It's pressing down a little bit more. Uh, but then we've got this really unsightly gap in the middle, so we need a hidden power switch. And that's where these parts come in. Now, I thought I'd use a blue kind of shoe piece to represent the uh, sort of water. Not that you're going to see it, but, you know, why not? <laughs> so there's a, a blue sort of underside bit that's going to press the button itself uh, and then we can add uh, a tile so it's got a smooth top on the top there another tile and then for this bit I don't know if you can actually see the water in the top of one of these things if you were to look directly from above or whether it's got kind of a lid so you don't get any evaporation or what I imagine it's that but I just thought for a bit of creative license anyway I would put some dark blue tiles on there, dark, uh, trans dark blue, uh, just so it kind of looks like you can see the surface of the water. So this uh, water tender is very full. So when I have this power cable in there, uh, maybe I should have added it, but there we go. I'll just have that there for now to demonstrate what I mean. Hold on, see if I can get it on. There we go. Then basically this button will hold onto that uh, bit there and will turn on and off the entire train so we can check that by looking at the coal box through there see if it comes on uh, and I can press that button Ooh. what have I done here oh I've got the button in the wrong place that's why it should be in the middle there there we go can have it all lined up or it won't work so I'm going to press the water surface and there you can see the orange 
has just come on. Can you see that? There we go. That's a better angle. So there we are. So off, on, off, on. Uh, and that is the way I always power all of my trains. When you turn on the battery box, all the lights work straight away, uh, and that helps you not leave them on for a start uh, and just looks really great. So even if they're not in motion, they do have their lights uh, fully on. So yeah, I really like that. So yeah, I'm going to need to put that wire properly in so I can add this brick back. Uh, and I'll fold up all of the wire in that space and then it should look rather fantastic. But we do now have a new problem actually. Uh, because I've had to make this one a little bit taller and a little bit more clunky, uh, I do think this one's a bit more streamlined looking, uh, but the fact that they're a little bit different sort of bothers me. So as I said, I had one plate layer in between the kind of slopes and the panel pieces and so on, whereas here I've got a brick. So maybe I should basically heighten the coal tender by two plate height uh, so they are the same. So you have to let me know what you think, but I'm going to have to make a decision for today. And I think, well, <laughs> I don't really want to, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, increase the height. Uh, I, I think it's worth seeing what it looks like with them both exactly the same. Um, the reason why I'm not looking forward to it is because this is absolutely crammed with wires that I had to fold in. It took absolutely ages, but at least I suppose I'll have a bit more room to fold them into uh, when I've heightened it. Uh, so anyway, there is kind of Mark 1 with the different heights. See what you think of that. Uh, but yeah, I'll try and do the alternate version next. Well, I've done the trickiest bit and it's actually made it a lot easier having all this extra room because I've uh, had to jack up the sides by two plates. I've also had to jack up the height of the IR receiver two plates. So it still sticks out of the top in the right way. Uh, and that means I've got a lot more space on the inside for all these wires. So folding them in this time has been a lot easier. Uh, in fact, I've got the one from the motor that sort of comes out the top of that going up and being folded in behind here, which is a lot better now. Uh, so I've only actually got all of the stuff from last time or maybe the time before uh, to do with all the lighting and all the rest of it in this section. So yeah, it's been a lot easier and I'm hoping that I should be able to just attach all of the cold surface and stuff, which is still there, looking a bit steeper now perhaps, uh, without it all falling apart on camera. I think it's a bit stronger now as well, because I've managed to put in a sort of cross beam that kind of links the two sides together, which means that when I push down that coal surface, it's not being pushed onto sort of folded wires. It's actually being pushed onto another plate, which is attached to the side. So if it looks all right, I think I'm going to be more happy with this solution, to be honest. And given that it will be consistent with the other one, I think it will be very good. So it does look a bit clunky. I think, compared with the original. Uh, and I have uh, increased the height of these ladders just by one plate, just so it's uh, slightly more central in the much bigger sort of side. Uh, but then I can make the wire go to the battery box, as is necessary. Uh, and then we can have, ooh, hold on, let's get this right. Leave that in there. And then we need to have all of this folded in. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be tricky, isn't it? So essentially, yeah, I'm going to fold all that in there uh, and then put it all together and then join the two uh, buffers together with another one of these grill pieces uh, like I have done here. And that just keeps everything together uh, when you're, well, using it and moving it from place to place. So yeah, I'm going to pause the camera again and do that. Hey, hey, the finished Flying Knotsman locomotive in all its glory and three sections, engine, coal tender and water tender. And I really like this repeating sticker. It's a bit 3170, <laughs> one, two, three right after each other, but at least you know they go together. Uh, and it's very black, so I'm not sure how this is coming out on the <laughs> film, but nonetheless, uh, I think it looks absolutely great. And the contrast of those uh, medium blue staff on there look absolutely brilliant. Uh, but the proof is in the pudding. So will it turn on? Pressing the battery box there, we can see the light on in the inside, which is increasingly hard to see. We've got the light on the front, which is working fabulously. Uh, and can we drive it around? Well, there's only one way to try that. Yep, <laughs> it's going around as well. So all the electronics are working absolutely perfectly. It looks great. That kind of link in between the two tenders is very smart indeed. You'd barely see that 
uh, having a wire there with the black on black. So I think it's a complete success. So do tell me what you think about this. Do tell me what you think about the height of the cold tender. For me, I think it's a little bit worse in how it looks, but the fact that it is actually level with the other one uh, makes more sense. I mean, if you look at that flying uh, Scotsman picture where it's got both of its tenders on, they are all the same height and you'd think they would be for aerodynamics. In fact, pretty much they're the same height as the uh, Loco itself. So, you know, maybe they're not right anyway. But um, yeah, I'm really liking that. I think that looks great. All it needs now is the five carriages, of which this will be the base of one, <laughs> uh, to uh, go on the back of it in due course. I'm really looking forward to doing those in uh, in good time. So, right, we need to get this in Brick Nottingham and have it charging around. And it'd be great if we could have another train with a camera mounted on to kind of trail in front of this looking back uh, and maybe chase it as well. Awesome. So into the Lego room then. And when I bring a new train in, I always kind of put it down on this corner just because it's one of the very few spaces which actually doesn't have obstacles all around the train track. Uh, my track goes behind things, through things, <laughs> next to things, uh, pretty much everywhere. But wow, look at that. It is looking very impressive indeed, in my opinion. I think it was right to go for the two tenders because now it just has much more of a physical presence. It looks much more significant and grand. Oh, yes. Very good. Uh, and the blacked out white light brick on the front looks really good. Doesn't show up as a sort of blemish anymore. Oh, and I added um, a plow sort of style front buffer. I can't remember if I mentioned that uh, on a previous video or not, but that kind of deserves a bedoying as well. Haven't got the buzz with me, so bedoying. <laughs> uh, but then the trans dark blue bit of water that you can kind of see in the water tender as well, hinting to its purpose, I think is a really good touch as well. Just a tiny splash of colour. And Samantha, of course, hanging out the back, looking uh, at the cargo train whizzing by in the opposite direction. So yeah, that just looks fantastic in my mind. So it'll be really nice to have the completed steam train going around my city rather than having uh, just two parts of it with a battery box kind of <laughs> visible uh, and coming up from behind. So uh, yeah, let's turn on the battery box uh, and then we can get the remote going and see this thing going around the city. So there it goes. I'll do it slower first lap to make sure there's no issues and so we can actually see it and I don't fall over getting ridiculously dizzy like I was with the Zeppelin train. Oh, steam train going over Gerda Bridge. That is a very good image, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really, really glad I did this water tender as opposed to uh, sticking it inside one of the carriages. Oh, that just looks beautiful, doesn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Right, let's uh, crank up the speed then. See if we can get it going a bit faster. Because these things would be whizzing along. It will be slow when it's got carriages on, of course, but at the moment it can go pretty fast indeed. In fact, I'm getting a little scared. <laughs> I'm going to slow it down <laughs> in case uh, the battery box is top heavy. Also, the pictures are probably a bit blurred if I keep spinning around at that speed. Uh, yeah, I'm going to fall over. <laughs> Right, uh, I suggest we get the uh, camera going for train cam uh, and we can kind of follow this thing uh, and, well, do the opposite and go out the front as well.
So I hope you'll agree that that is a great success. I think having the two tenders the same size really does make a lot of sense now. I've seen it going around the track. It doesn't look too clunky at all. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Do let me know what you think, though, or if there's any space for any further improvements. But otherwise, thanks very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a haul on Wednesday. And I've got a couple... Ah, big crash. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, it appears that the front of the cargo train has smashed into the back of the cargo train, uh, probably killing both of the occupants of the uh, pump wagon there. What a disaster. <laughs> oh no. Uh, so I haven't done a full train crash investigation yet, uh, but if we follow it all the way along, basically we've left the shunter on the uh, split level wagon all on the bridge and it hasn't hit anything. So I think that basically the magnet has given out and the sort of connectors that I use to join uh, and reinforce each of these joins uh, has probably popped off somewhere. So that's annoying. Uh, it's uh, under a lot of stress, the cargo train, now that it has so many carriages on. Maybe I should add one of those uh, connectors to the underside of each of the connections as well. Uh, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> I kind of like to include all of my crashes uh, because they are quite good fun. We didn't see that one live on camera, but we definitely heard it. <laughs> and I didn't swear, so you'll be glad uh, glad to hear that. Uh, but where was I? Uh, thanks for watching, all that sort of stuff. Uh, next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll have a brick call. Um, and I've got uh, a couple of packages already to add to the ones that I bought from Bricklink. Uh, which are from, I think, Germany and uh, the US. That's from people that have sent things to my address. So uh, if you want to do that, you can do that as well, and it will be included in a future haul. And then on Friday, I think we'll be going back over to the fairground, where we're going to add even more rides to all of those. You know, I'm going to have to fit them all in up to about here. I'm really getting worried that I've done too many. Uh, well, <laughs> more is more. Uh, so anyway, whatever we get up to, I'm sure we'll have great fun. So until then, see you.